tomato. Notice it's just normal tomato. I just broke these off, put them next to them, so you think that they were vine ripened. I I break them off, I break them off in the store, so I don't have to pay for the vine. Oh, there you go. Right, right. Because it's weight. Yes. Right. Yeah. But what I like about it is that it looks much more sophisticated. It does. Oh, it does. oh my gosh! And I just glued it one on. <laughs> There's a, there's a whole factory of people who just glue them on. Just glue them on, right? Make a dollar twenty-five now, three dollars a pound. You know your walls over there. That's what you got. I had my business card. Up. May I make you some? Yes, please. Throw the tomatoes. Oh, I found it fascinating. I've never seen this before. Look very closely at the tomato. Yes. Can you see those seeds? Mm -hmm. They started sprouting the little wow. sperms. Yeah. So that's what the next stage is when it's really ripe. Right. <laughs> and then finally it goes down and you have drops to the ground. Right. So technically this is probably one of the ripest you can get. It was probably well, I don't know. The, the guy gave me a discount on it. He actually gave it to me. So I guess hey, where'd you get it too far? Well, we have a farmer's market on um, federal. Uh, sorry, uh, Sundays, farmers market. Where? Um, right opposite the lady that we saw. Is that a pretty good farmers market, or? Um, it's expensive, but um, uh, reliable. You can always get an eight dollar orchid if you want one. I know. I like an eight dollar orchid. They're very good for um, gifts when you're looking for a gift. You know, um, Sorry I was late. Uh, sorry that your husband died. Uh, thank you for watching my path. Congratulations on your new job. Yeah. I mean, so gratitude. That, that would be another... Uh, I, I would want the kid to know how to express gratitude and think of ways. That's a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a skill. Um, you're talking about uh, language skill as well. Yeah, no. I can understand teaching language, but you mean like in didactically the in yeah in a language. Mm -hmm. But as in teaching it to normal normal students, we shouldn't have to do that. Teachers shouldn't have that. Can we model it? In other words, yes. I will interrupt my class of math or science. I sometimes teach science and tell the student. You did a great job here. You came into this class prepared. Who was your middle school math teacher? Let's write them a letter right now. Yes. And they can't write that letter. So that's where we're starting. I don't know if it's Vygotsky or whoever it is. Uh, I, I like dropping the name Vygotsky because I haven't really read him. But uh, Mario quotes him. He's real Russian, right? Leo Vygotsky was in the 1930s and he had this guy idea that you learn at the, your horizon called the zone of proximity. See, if I say words like that, people think I must know something, right? But if I just say it's at the horizon, they think that uh, anybody could come up with that observation. Right? It makes you sound very new ages as new ages. Oh, new ages if I'm talking about horizon. Yeah, but if horizon. I say Vygotsky, I must be a professor or something. Anytime you use a Russian sounding name, it's, mm. it's serious. Right. And so it's obviously, I read something. And, and trust me, learning, a, here's a skill, learning about an idea without picking up a book, just going to someone and having them explain it to me. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with showing students that you don't have to be a reader to be educated? Teaching, teaching students how to ask questions. Love it. And why do I have to be the language arts teacher to do that? In other words, here we are, we've been transported to the University of Beijing, we've been asked to sit with a bunch of new teachers. Some of them have been teaching for 10 years, and they're now wanting to learn the Western way. How do we stop lecturing? And what do we tell them? Ask questions. Ask questions, ah, that's the best one. Um, the paper chase was that with that. Um, um, is the oh. law? They asked. 
was it a television show and a movie? And a movie, something like that. The Law School. Yeah. Mr. Carter. <laughs> Could you tell us something about what we just read? You know, I think it's to ask a teacher to ask questions. You have to you have to have a highly I very rarely ask a question in class that I do not already know the answer to. Mm. Because if you're asking questions you don't know the answer to, there's no follow-up. Mm. You have to have some... You're, you're getting the students to talk, but you have to have some way of leading... You're not really... You're always leading the students. You're kind of controlling... It's, it's like... It's like a shepherd. So it's not a free-for-all. No, it's, you're, you're like a shepherd, I guess. And the sheep kind of know where to go. And the sheep have an idea. But a good shepherd probably doesn't work that much. It just kind of nudges it. And that's what a question, and that's what a good question is. It nudges it in a direction that you want it to go. Normally because you know the answer or you're kind of sure of the answer. It's, it's really good sometimes, though, also. You find out you don't know the answer and you're wrong. And then it takes it into a whole different... That's self-exploration as a teacher, and that's always good for students to see also. So is it important to have a lesson plan not only for that day, but for the entire course? If we're talking about language, honestly, a good language teacher's lesson plan should be done as the student is speaking. Because the horizon is moving. Yes. Yes, you can't... You might be able to pull out themes or pull out things, but good language teachers, they're teaching something. They're not, they're not teaching a math. They're not teaching history. 